My favorite part about making YouTube videos is that I always learn new things. For instance, when I made this video, I learned that one, John Wall has one of the craziest against all odds stories I've ever heard. And two, when you look at his numbers, John Wall isn't just a good point guard in the modern NBA. He's not just a great point guard in the modern NBA. No, if you look at his first seven seasons, John Wall has proven to be one of the best point guards in NBA history. And that seems crazy, I understand that. But as you'll see in this video, the proof is right there in front of us. So how are you guys doing? My name is Mike and today we are looking at the incredible story of John Wall. Also remember I'm answering questions at the end of every single video so stick around until the end please. Growing up John Wall heard the same thing time and time again. He was just like his dad. This was not a compliment. Over eight years before John was born his would-be father had been charged with second degree murder after shooting a woman in the head during an argument. Then three weeks after John's first birthday Day, his father robbed a store at gunpoint and was charged with armed robbery. And so, until the age of nine, John Wall grew up with a father he could only visit in prison. And then, at the age of nine, John's father was released a month early from prison because he was terminally ill with liver cancer. He would die in a hotel bathroom while on vacation with the entire family. And John's last memory of his father was watching the man he never really got to know stretchered out of the hotel hotel by an ambulance. To this day, John Wall still keeps the Randy Moss jersey his dad wore when he was stretchered out, which is telling. Because this jersey is both a reminder of the father he lost and the man he swore to himself he would never become. But the promise to never become his father would come later in life, because in the years following his dad's death, John Wall found himself full of anger and rage towards his current life situation. At the earliest levels of basketball, he started on the court but was an absolute nightmare off it. Soon he found himself given the nickname Crazy J and this nickname was very well deserved. Every day it seemed he got into trouble. He would constantly get into fights at the local boys and girls club. He was kicked out of basketball camps and then he began to slip further into a dark environment. At the age of 13, John and his friends would break car windows and actually steal cars, joyriding them around the neighborhood and almost daring a cop to pull them over. At this point, it was clear that he was running with a dangerous crew, and twice he had actual bullets fired at him during late night confrontations, and once he even shot back at someone. It was at this time that John almost completely lost himself, almost became just another criminal in the streets, almost became his father. Then as quickly as these troubled times came in his life, suddenly they were gone. Suddenly the kid who would get into fights at the smallest perceived insult on the court was now just turning the other cheek and running back on defense. John would attribute this change in attitude to his mother, the woman he cherishes above anything else on this earth. Throughout his early life, his mother's words would ring in his head. Don't be like your father, you're better than that, John. And he was. Still though, his reputation followed him. As a sophomore, John was cut from his high school basketball team even though he was clearly one of the most talented young point guards in America. The coach decided to play it safe and chose to play a senior who he thought would not cause him problems. This was a setback for John, but now he was a changed man. Instead of lashing out at his dismissal from the team, he chose to instead transfer to Word of God Christian Academy. It was there that his coach, Levy Beckwith, asked him, John, why are you not getting recruited by Duke and Caroline? John said he didn't know, to which his coach replied, you're not getting recruited by them because you're an ass. And so John Wall put his head down and worked to create a new image for himself. The image of a great teammate and a hard worker. His newfound determination would pay off as the summer after his sophomore year, he was awarded with an invitation to the Reebok All-American Camp. At the camp, he turned heads with his incredible athleticism and advanced court vision. And suddenly, the kid who was once stealing cars was now being recruited by every college in the nation. One school stood out though, or rather, one coach stood out. As at Memphis, John Calipari had taken the NCAA by storm with his dribble drive offense. Led by star point guard Derek Rose, the Tigers reached the 
2008 NCAA championship game before losing to Kansas. And so when it came time to choose a college, Wall chose to follow Coach Cal to his new job as the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. But there was one problem. In his senior year, John was arrested and charged with breaking and entering. And while this certainly may seem like it was John Wall taking a step back, slipping towards his old life as Crazy J, this really wasn't the case. The truth was that John had broken into an abandoned house to spend some alone time with a girl, and he was caught by the police. Luckily, these charges would eventually be dropped, but still, John had to prove himself yet again. And so, while most top recruits were spending their time working on their games and hanging out with their friends that summer, John Wall enrolled at the University of Kentucky for summer classes as a type of trial run. He would finish the summer with a perfect 4.0 GPA, and teachers and administration were impressed with the polite and hardworking man they saw before them. And now that we've talked about where John Wall has came from, let's change gears here. Because after his rough childhood, John Wall has grown into a legitimate NBA star. In fact, as I said before, he's grown into one of the greatest point guards the NBA has ever seen. And I know you think that's crazy, but trust me, I'm about to convince you that it isn't. In his one year at Kentucky, John Wall put together one of the best seasons by a freshman point guard in college basketball history. He put up 16.6 points and 6.5 assists a night. He was the National Freshman of the Year, and he was a consensus first-team All-American. Kentucky would finish the 2010 season 29-2, but unfortunately, their dreams of a championship came crashing down in the Elite Eight when they were taken down by West Virginia. Still, though, it was clear that this was only the beginning for John Wall. As John himself has said, I don't want to be remembered as a good player. I want to be remembered as one of the greats. And believe it or not, in his first seven seasons in the NBA, John Wall has proven that he belongs in the discussion of the great NBA point guards of all time. Now, I know it's still very early, and I know that Wall has never won a championship or an MVP, or has even been named to the All-NBA. But with that said, when you take a look at John Wall's career so far, well, you find that in his first seven seasons, the man has averaged 18.8 points, 9.2 assists, and 1.7 steals a game. In the history of the league, only five other players have ever averaged more than 18 points, 9 assists, and 1.7 5 steals a game in their first seven years, which already puts John Wall among some elite company, but I'm not done. Let me throw one more stat at you. Between his fifth and seventh seasons, John Wall has averaged over 20 points and 10 assists a game. The only other players to do that are... Wait, there are none. John Wall is the only player in NBA history to average 20 and 10 between his fifth and seventh seasons. For years stuck on bad teams, the man has quietly produced some monster seasons for a point guard, but we never talk about him when we talk about elite point guards of all time. By any statistical measure, in the last three years, John Wall has produced at the level of some of the other great point guards in league history. Just taking a look at a list that includes Magic, Stockton, Chris Paul, Isaiah Thomas, Jason Kidd, and Steve Nash, it's clear that John Wall is producing at the same level between his 5th and 7th years as these NBA legends. And the most exciting thing about John Wall for me is that he's proven that he has the work ethic to cement himself as one of the NBA's all-time great point guards. His off-seasons have been spent working at his craft. Every day in the summer, he wakes up at 6am, spends 2-3 to three hours in the weight room working on his body, then heads to the gym, where he has taken hundreds of jump shots and worked to develop his game into that of an elite. NBA point guard. This hard work has paid dividends as his PER has grown from an average 15.8 as a rookie to an awesome 23.8 this year and in 2017 he's shooting 41% from 15 to 19 feet compared to just 34% in his first year in the league. This newfound ability to knock down mid-range jumpers has led to newfound problems for NBA defenders. No longer is John just dangerous in transition and around the basket. Now he's able to score off pull-up jumpers in the half court and that's translated to newfound success for the Washington Wizards. And speaking of Washington, well, to be honest, for the first six seasons of his career, it's been the Wizards who have held back John from taking his place among the NBA's great point guards. Sure, in recent years, John has been in the discussion of the league's top floor generals, but his team's lack of success has held him back from leading that discussion. In his first three seasons in the NBA, the Wizards lost more games than anybody other than the Bobcats and the Cavaliers. 
years. And as those losses piled up, people began to have doubts. Was John Wall really a franchise point guard if he could not take the Wizards to the NBA playoffs? It didn't matter that the only other all-star on his team, Bradley Beal, spent half of the Wizards games on the bench with injuries. It didn't matter that his other teammates were average at best. It didn't matter that his coach, Randy Whitman, was seen as one of the worst coaches in the NBA. The blame fell squarely on one man, John Wall. And so after a summer that saw the city of Washington embarrassed after Kevin Durant refused to even meet with them during free agency, John began the 2017 season with a new mission. At every turn in his life so far, he had been doubted and he had proven his doubters wrong. As a kid, he was seen as a thug, but he rose to become the number five recruit in his class. As a high school senior, he was seen as a criminal, but he rose to become a first team All-American. And now, in his seventh year in the NBA, John Wall was seen as a losing basketball player, and so he decided to change that. Heading into training camp this year, he told Sports Illustrated that national fans and media, quote, still don't respect me. And at the beginning of the year, he was right. The doubts were still there, the questions were still there. But finally, with an actually talented roster around him, Wall has quieted even his biggest doubters. This season, the Wizards have risen from a playoff afterthought to a legitimate Eastern Conference Finals contender. They currently sit with a 46 and 31 record and are in fourth place in the Eastern Conference. But in John Wall's mind, his mission is not over. Just listen to what he had to say a few months ago on TNT. At the end of the year, where do you see the Wizards? No, I see I see I was getting to the Easy Conference Finals. That's how I go. And so listening to his TNT interview, I've got to say, based on his life so far, based on the obstacles he's overcome, I believe John Wall. I believe the Wizards have a good chance to make the Eastern Conference Finals this season. And even if they don't, I still think we're going to see some great things from John Wall and the Washington Wizards in the near future. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I got to say, that was just a crazy story. I had no idea John Wall had to go through so much to get to where he is today. I mean, Crazy J. Should we uh bring back? that nickname i kind of like it. and so if you're new to this channel i hope you subscribe i make basketball videos like this nba conspiracies nba what ifs basically if you love basketball i promise you you will love this channel now as for our questions of the day last video i answered one from twitter so we're gonna answer one from instagram and snapchat instagram question thank you tdan55 if you could be the gm of your favorite team and could make one realistic trade what would it be i know a lot of bulls fans do not agree here but if i were the bulls i would trade jimmy butler for a top pick in this year's draft and any other young promise prospects we could get. I just don't think the Bulls are ever going to be a championship title contender with their current roster. I love Jimmy. I think he's an amazing player. I think if he was on the Celtics, they'd be title contenders. I just don't think the Bulls are going to be able to build around Jimmy. If he was like 22 or 23, it'd be a different story, but he's 27. We need to rebuild. Please, Bulls. Snapchat question. Thank you, Steinily, or something like that. What is my inspiration making YouTube videos? I've got to say the money. No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, it was not the money. I never thought I would ever come close to having this kind of channel. Really, it was just I've always had a passion for the NBA. Basketball has just always been my favorite sport by far. I would hear people say, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And I always asked myself, what do I love? And I love basketball. And when I was somehow able to make that into a career, it was amazing, ridiculous. I still am not even sure. But yeah, my inspiration is just I love basketball. And I love just seeing you guys enjoy my videos. I just read the comments. It's, just, it's everything is just amazing. Thank you so much. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface, he looks calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole